Rome holds the oldest known depictions of the Virgin Mary. In the catacombs of Priscilla, this fresco undoubtedly dates to the 3rd century AD. However, there's a strong Christian tradition that St. Helen, mother of Emperor Constantine, brought to Rome from the east an icon of Mary, made by St. Luke the Evangelist. That image, were that image to still be around, it's debated whether or not it's still in existence, but that image uh, is, uh, is, is in its own right considered archaeopita because of the, 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 the actual presence of Mary and the child and the role of the evangelist who was already inspired by God to produce the, to produce the image. Archaeopita means not made by human hands. And so the idea is that this is something that's more than just a human representation or a painting. When we talk about this, we're talking about something that is beyond, um, beyond, it becomes something that's more than just the cleverness of an artist. This is not the interpretation. What we're looking for is as an art that is beyond the interpretation of just an artist. It's in looking for, it's an art or an image that looks for an absolute. There are a few icons in Rome that could be candidates to have been created by St. Luke. Among them, the Salus Populi Romani in the Basilica of St. Mary Major, the Madonna del Conforto in the Basilica of Santa Francesca Romana, the Madonna del Popolo, in the Church of Santa Maria del Popolo, the Madonna delle Grazie in the Church of Santa Maria delle Grazie at the Roman Forum, and several images of the Madonna di San Sisto, known as the Advocata, and kept in Santa Maria in Vialata, Santa Maria del Rosario in Monte Mario, and in the Church of Santa Maria in Araceli. Of the images drawn from the type made by St. Luke in the tradition of the first Madonna and Child. Uh, the most famous one in Rome, I think it would be safe to say, is the Madonna Salus Populi Romani, the uh, Madonna of the salvation of the Roman people, which we have in Santa Maria Maggiore, and of course, was famously taken out on many occasions by Gregory the Great to Pope Francis uh, in moments when Rome and Italy found itself in moments, in, found itself in crisis. The Basilica of St. Mary Major is the oldest church in the West dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary and is a monument of the Council of Ephesus where the church proclaimed Our Lady, Theotokos, Mary, Mother of God. Could the most important Marian basilica in Christendom indicate that the icon of Salus Populi Romani is the first and true image of Our Lady? Paul Bade says no. The icon Salus Populi Romani is from a much, much later date. One can ascertain this by the fact that she has a child in Santa Maria Maggiore. One can easily date this icon by this fact, because at the Council of Ephesus, it was established that Mary is the mother of God, not only the mother of Christ. She is the mother of God, and since that time, she is always depicted with the child. Bade points to another icon which he believes to be the first image of Our Lady. This icon is located in the convent of the Dominican Sisters on top of Monte Mario, for this icon was personally carried by St. Dominic to the community of his first Dominican Sisters in February 1221. Since that time, this icon has been locked up with them behind bars like a prisoner, for Christ's sake. The nuns say, we don't care if she's the oldest. We only know she's the most beautiful icon of all. The artistic technique of this icon dates back to the 1st and 3rd centuries AD. In other words, the technique is clearly pre-Byzantine. It only seems clear that this icon came to Rome in the great iconoclasm. In the iconoclasm, she was rescued from the east and came here to the west. There's a very important quotation from Archimandrite Zenon, who said, In the time of the iconoclasm, in the time of the iconoclastic controversy, the church defended the images. Today, in the time of the great crisis, the images are coming back to defend the church. This is very important. It is very simple. 
God became man. He did not become a book. And Mary too, she was human. And when God became man, he and Mary also became an image. Images are pictorial documents. If the icon of the Advocata at Monte Mario documents the true appearance of Our Lady, why then did she leave a different image of herself to St. Juan Diego in Mexico? And how is it that she has continued to appear with different physical features to visionaries in different parts of the world? Watch the next Vaticano to discover the answers.